cameras for a short while bit till we start <laughs> okay sir yes shivam yes sir actually i am in the plant ma am i in the plant sir you are in the plant what which plant yes. is this the solar solar adani solar adani solar you are making the model yes sir yeah yeah you are making those solar cells yes sir but array you don't make you make only the cells no uh, no sir cells and the modules uh, the pellet the pellets we have made the modules modules also okay yes, but cells and modules are there making the modules is also a small scale industry work no <laughs> it's not yes sir not specialized cells are the main thing cells uh... cells are the cells we are making the cells but the uh, the things uh, with the cells are we will make na that came from the china only wafers we call it wafers wafers yeah correct yes. from the wafer you make the cell yes. then the housing housing for that then the modules get done yes. anyway yeah ansha ji you are traveling ansha ji yes sir good evening sir good evening sabko belated holi thank you sir acha ye abhi see today we are uh, we'll be discussing a subject which is uh, i won't say fairly new but uh, um, yeah it can say fairly new are you able to see the screen yes sir ah <clears throat> see the why i thought thought of doing this in fact i remember about 8 uh, 9 years back in one of the company's board room we were sitting and uh, they said you must know about this thing called the internet of things or iot i said what is so special about it uh, when we were discussing he said that this is going to revolutionize the way anything works in the world you know kind of thing so we were trying to understand how it is and of course every single um, aspect of life is going to be impacted by this called the internet of things actually internet of things uh, let us understand the word itself internet to sabko we, we all know what is an internet no but what is this of things is actually supposed to be for things rather than of things why things because you know the for want of uh, you know let me say in my own crude um, hindi which i know is that thing what is, what is the hindi word for thing a cheeze cheese cheese ah cheese 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 okay saman no that is a different thing no anyway so internet of cheese now what does it mean cheese oh, what cheese now it when it came to that it says that it is can be applied to a wide range of things and a wide range of applications and uh, this was possible because of the internet growing so fast and wild and the you know the speeds and the bandwidths growing everything you know multiplying over the years so before we understand go into this internet of things or actually internet for things although i have said that here it is for in operations i am will go through many things starting from home okay so now first thing is we will look at the history of the internet in india see worldwide of course internet started somewhere in uh, 1960 but uh, it was quite late uh, because there of course the universities in the us and the military establishments in the us were having 
what some form of the internet but in india it formally came in, in 1986 which uh, was called as arnet actually because education and research net and uh, was primarily aimed for indian institute of science in bangalore then under five uh, first iits uh, starting from of course my karakpur uh, bombay delhi uh, madras and kanpur these were the five uh, main iits and uh, this was uh, done by the department of electronics called uh, doe you know see those days if you look at the speed you will laugh you know today <laughs> it is uh, was it like that and uh, i have i have myself experienced uh, this technology from those days you know where the only way of internet working was through a telephone line you know this was all, they called lease lines or telephone lines so in 1991 not so far off you know the first leased line with 9.6 kilobytes per second today today we don't even talk kilobytes we talk mbps right so 9.6 kilobits uh, bits per second in january 1991 the first line was established between delhi and mumbai those days of course the uh, agency which was operating was the videsh sanchar nigam limited i still remember those vsnl towers in bombay near uh, that azad maidan that used to be the nodal place from where the internet uh, was uh, uh, controlled because for quite a long time it was under the government actually government in the sense department of electronics and vsnl 1992 the first uh, 64 kilobits per second internet gateway link was established across now between mumbai and virginia in the us and operated by nic nic is national informatics center because a national informatics center was formed by the government of india and the internet gateway first link was established and obviously through that then again access to the various parts of the world so in 1995 was the first publicly available internet was launched on 15th august by vsnl and that was 9.6 kilobits again uh, per second speed and you can imagine what the cost was it was uh, uh, priced at 5200 rupees for 250 hours for individuals for uh, establishments commercial establishments it was three times more uh then uh in fact i remember it they it, it used to the in, internet uh, um address used to have the gas that is some uh, I, i forget the name yeah and uh, those days even to get an individual the preference was given for students and uh, when they showed us showed a student id they were uh getting it at a much cheaper rate not very far off you can imagine you know 20 25 years uh, back then the 1997 the first integrated service digital network isdn was introduced and this time with 56 kbps per thing but it was a dial up connection like you you had to dial up the from your uh, phone phone line to a particular thing and then when uh, it gets connected then you are connected to the internet to your system much later of course in 2004 the broad, broadband poli- policy was formed by the government of uh, india and uh, the maximum they could think of at that time was 256 kbps per second 2010 that's hardly 12 years back right the first 3g spectrum was auctioned of course earlier to that you had the 2g spectrum uh and of course you <clears throat> you know the infamous 2g spectrum uh 
whatever happened politically anyway we will not go get into that d raja was the minister uh, in the center and all that now there were 358 internet service providers earlier you know the internet service provider was only vsnl now then subsequently when the spectrum was auctioned and many people came into being which they purchased the uh, spectrum so there were uh, after this auction rather now there are 358 isps or internet service providers offering bandwidth broadband and narrow band services this is a data available as on 31st december just a couple of years back the, of course the, you know the largest uh, isp uh, which forms almost 99.5% are basically of course uh, jio has a uh, uh, more than 50% share airtel has about 25% share vodafone idea i'm sure vodafone ideas and all must have come down now bsnl about 5% and one act act is quite popular in many cities uh, with, but their population is much lower these are the five largest isps and there are many many others who also are in the area of uh, providing internet service now we'll look at what is internet of things well as i said it could be called internet of things or internet for things but in common parlance throughout the world we call it iot or internet of things it describes physical objects or groups of such objects that are embedded with sensors what is first important is a sensor to sense the signal coming out of a control from a remote device let us say now we'll see the examples you know it must have a processing ability that is it has to receive that signal and we should be able to process that ability a process that signal to actuate something or do something or store something so the required software for that and other technologies that connect and exchange data with other devices and systems over the internet because all this is done through the internet which is available so that is why it is called internet of things or other communications networks connected to a network and be yeah okay individually addressable <clears throat> now i give you a very simple example in uh, which i use myself of course i have an alexa uh, here of course you, anybody who downloads an alexa software can also ask a lot of things but i mine is not exactly a smart home but i do have one device which i use many times which is a robotic um... good evening sir hello hello good evening <laughs> uh, a robotic uh, uh, clean, you know uh, what do you call cleaner now i normally travel between mysore and bangalore me and my wife and then um, uh, when uh, after two days or three days when we come we want to have the uh, the house uh, sweeped at least you know there is no dust i am able to using my app in my mobile i can actuate the robot which is there at my house in mysore and it takes about a couple of hours to completely clean the place and go back to its dock and tell me and show me what all it is doing now this is a very simple example which i am telling you which i i practically use that sitting in a remote place i know what is i can do get a particular job done today more and more devices you see 
you, it could be tomorrow a dishwasher, it could be a washing machine, it could be anything can be connected to uh, be made smart, including lighting, including air conditioning at home. You know, you can say that I'm coming in another half an hour, let me switch on the AC and keep the room cool. So these kind of things are uh, possible because of the internet. One easy, uh, easier example for me to say is that, you know, the which all of you must be knowing is the security uh, cameras, you know. Like, uh, of course, we have in our building a security camera, which I can access from anywhere. I'm sure when, when you're a hospital in your, uh, and this is very, very commonly used by all businessmen today for security reasons, whether it is at home uh, or mostly in business uh, uh, premises, you have maybe eight, 16, 32 cameras. Like uh, uh, when I was uh, president of the school, we have about 32 cameras. Uh, sitting at my house or where even wherever I'm, I'm traveling, I can see what is happening in individual classrooms. You know, those kind of things. This is, again, all this is possible because of the internet uh, and connected to the these devices. So that is what is the internet of things. In the consumer market, IoT technology is most synonymous with products pertaining to the concept of a smart home. Now, what is a smart home? Smart, uh, like we have also seen that, you know, India, uh, the government was talking in terms of developing 100 smart cities. Now, when you say smart, obviously it means that a lot of uh, appliances, devices, which are controlled, according to how you program or how you actuate. It is like saying that the light should go on once the, let us say it becomes evening. You can do that. There's nothing, uh, no, no great uh, thing. And then you are able to control. And then the light should be on, lights and fans should be on only when there is a person in the room. When I go, go out of the room, the light and fan should be switched off. Not very difficult. There is a proximity switch, which is connected to the net, it's the thing, and it can be done. It can be actuated. So similarly, when the room temperature goes above a certain thing, the AC must be switched on. So there are smart home includes devices and appliances, such as lighting fixtures, thermostats, home security systems and cameras, and other home appliances that support one or more common ecosystems and can be controlled by devices associated with that systems. Usually, the smartphones are and smart speakers. Smart speakers is like uh, my Alexa. You see, the moment I say Alexa, it wakes up. You know, I have one Alexa right in front of me. <laughs> Alexa, what is the temperature outside? Right now, it's 28 degrees Celsius. Tonight, expect a low of 19 degrees. Hope you're having a fun Sunday. Thank you, Alexa. So, see, now I have not even moved anything. Just I've asked. It is 28 degrees outside <laughs> here in Mysore. See, I can ask for many, many things sitting here, you know, and uh, just like, unlike uh, in. Uh, Internet, you have to type and search and all that kind of thing. So this is a smart speaker, right? So smartphone, so we know that everybody is using a smartphone today, correct? And the amount of apps which are being developed, that is all to uh, making you to easy to do certain applications which the app is designed for. Okay, apart from consumer application, IoT, is widely used in medical and healthcare. In fact, I would say the one of the biggest, um, I won't say beneficiary, the uh, biggest uh, uh, advantage is in medical application, medical and healthcare. 
a lot more, especially in remote uh, healthcare. You can think of many, many, many projects which can be done there. Transportation, uh, manufacturing, agriculture, energy management, environment monitoring, military. And these are broadly classified into consumer applications, commercial applications, industrial applications, and infrastructure applications. Of course, there can be some more, but mostly everything falls into these categories. The main theme of the Internet of Things is to embed short-range mobile transceivers in various gadgets and daily necessities to enable new forms of communication between people and things and between things themselves. Today, you find in the market a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the smart TV, of course, you must have heard of that, kind, that has come in very much. But you also have, uh, because smart TV, we know, you know, even today, you know, you press the remote and you don't have to type out what you are searching. You just uh, talk into it and then it uh, takes you to that particular page, you know. Uh, light switches, fan switches, everything is becoming smart. You know, in fact, there is a smart toilet, you know, which uh, tells uh, uh, while you are at it, then it gives you a lot of other parameters which are there about your system. So, this is what is uh, on the internet. Now, the question is, when was it actually born? You know, like everybody says, when, when was it actually born? Or rather, when it became a common buzzword, rather, let us put it. Cisco, of course, you must be knowing, you have heard of this Cisco. Cisco is basically a networking and switching company. See, basically, in any of these activities which the Internet of Things does, you need a network. You need a switch. When I say switch, it is not a physical switch. Like even your uh, mobile phone is connected through a switch. When you dial one number, it is various things happen and the background is then and then it goes and connects to the other person. That's a switch. So Cisco Systems estimated that the IoT was born, meaning he has used the word inverted commas, born between 2008 and 2009, let's say that is one, and roughly about 12, 13 years back, with the things to people ratio growing. See, not that it was not there earlier, but more and more applications and more and more developments in various different areas started happening as the internet also became the bandwidth. See, we were as that is why I took the first slide on the history of the internet. Had it still remained at 256 kilobits per second and that kind of a thing, we, we would not have had IoT now. Now we are in 4G now. We are you all know that we are now in 4G and 5G is coming, and 5G is much, much faster compared to thing, and a lot more things can be achieved by 5G. Today. Sitting here in my house, I have a bandwidth of about 150 Mbps, which is very common today. 150, it can go up to 3 Mbps and in some cases goes up to 1 gigabyte, gigabits per second. Whereas uh, what was what we saw, I have seen from that 9 point, 9 point something kilobits per second when uh, uh, in the, the, the early days of internet, all you could do was send some emails, you know, at the most. Uh, that was what was uh, being used. And that also on a, on a slow computer. Right. So uh, with a CRT tube, not, a, not even the flat screen what you see today. Okay. So roughly IoT, as uh, we can say that the critical things to people ratio using IOT was somewhere between 2008 and 2009. Now we talked about smart home. 
Now, what is this smart home? Roughly, of course, again, to tell you, a lot and lot of many people are using and it's becoming more and more common. Like uh, people, uh, of course, uh, in India, we can afford to have to, uh, a lot of servants and other things, but then in many places, even it is not even possible. And uh, one thing which we commonly use is the security cameras, right? Everybody knows that, uh, you know, uh, aware that you have security cameras at home and you can watch that uh, wherever you are while, while traveling and things like that, you know. Uh, smart locks are coming, becoming more and more popular now because in, invariably we tend to mis misplace our keys. We don't know, you know, uh, and uh, many things. Smart lock makes it easy for uh, uh, you to get in or if you want somebody else like uh, whom who wants to uh, a friend or a family who wants to uh, get into the house all you need to share is that whatever code or whatever you have for you to enter so locks is very and uh, many applications are also built around these things tvs and speakers smart tvs we already know then there are as you say, thermostat based, you know, the switching on and off of uh, lighting, uh, switching on and off of uh, uh, air conditioning or heaters, as the case may be in whichever country you are there. Many appliances we saw, you know, you want to switch on your uh, washing machine, dishwashers and things like that. Or if you have a lawn, you want to switch on the lawn irrigation, uh, at a certain point, uh, time of the day, you know, that kind of thing, you know. So there are much, many, many more applications, but then these are some of the common applications which you see in a smart home. I would next take on the internet of medical things or relating to medical and healthcare because we have a few people, few of you who are there in that particular field. This is one of the, uh, where it is uh, emerging to be very um, useful, I would say, most useful there. The first thing, of course, we all know that, uh, you know, the Apple Watch or the Fitbit, <laughs> which uh, we wear, or we call it a smart uh, watch, you know. Uh, now it has become very common. Earlier it used to be that uh, only people who could afford uh, 20,000 plus of, uh, um, uh, especially the Apple watch used to cost about 25, 30 or something like that. And we could be affordable. Fitbit was around 20. I had a Fitbit earlier, then I changed over to another brand. Main reason is because it keeps track of a whole lot of your activities and uh, uh, your uh, BP, your heart rate, uh, not BP, sorry, uh, heart rate, um, how many steps you have done, what is your sleep pattern of the previous day. Uh, you can set record, meaning uh, goals and achieve. You are in a community, your data is uh, can be, you know, you can discuss that with your community. There, there are a lot of things which you can do, but just, just by wearing the watch, which is very common. And uh, uh, I'm sure some of you are using these uh, Fitbit type uh, devices, you know, clone devices. Definitely the health of uh, people improve with this because see one basic thing about anything in life is that anything which can be measured should be measured. And when once you are measuring, you analyze the measurement, and then take corrective, analyze it, and then take corrective action. This is the basis of any uh, activity. So obviously, the more you know that uh, when you see your weekly graph on the Fitbit, saying that I've been a little lax on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, now I should do a little more walking and things like that. So it makes you to be there. On the other hand, again, when there you can set... Uh, uh, things where to give, give you an alarm, especially you, uh, we have something like the <clears throat> stress levels. 
No, it monitors the stress level. The moment it goes beyond a certain things, it gives you a warning to slow down. So this, uh, uh, one thing is if this same thing is connected to your care provider, let us say, your care provider can monitor and uh, keep knowing. So it need not necessarily that only you know. Through the internet, through the app which is provided, which is again there in the care provider's uh, smartphone. Right. Sitting here, I can possibly, if my mother is wearing a Fitbit at uh, sitting in Bangalore, I can know her activities and then uh, monitor her uh, vital uh, signs. So application of IoT for medical and health related purposes, data collection and analysis for research and monitoring is what is the Internet of Medical Things. Now, I gave you an example before starting the Fitbit because everybody is, most people are, know what is a Fitbit. So, IOMT or uh, Internet of Medical Things is smart healthcare using technology for creating a digitized healthcare system connecting available medical resources and healthcare services. Well, Applications can in, in healthcare and medical can be enormous. In fact, remote health monitoring. And in India, especially in remote rural places, which do not have access to um, quality healthcare, we can have uh, remote stations wherein the patient can be monitored by a uh, uh, not a very experienced trainer, but at least a person who knows how to get the basic, uh, um, let's say, an X-ray or uh, uh, today even X-ray is digitized. Uh, you have uh, uh, any other parameters which are there, which can directly be uh, sent, uh, goes on real time to a medical doctor sitting in a, a major uh, hospital and he can advise on the based on what is there what are they what are the things to be done you know so it is not only monitoring but also providing health care you know that can be done uh, emergency notification systems uh, for people who are under uh, you know certain categories where the moment certain parameters go above or below a certain limit it can be the hospital is notified and then the corresponding uh, uh, following actions are taken to ensure that he is provided the emergency care. Of course, blood pressure, uh, heart rate monitor, pacemakers is something which is very important. And uh, now we have advanced hearing aids, which also are uh, tuned to uh, with the uh, right, especially cochlear implants and things like that, which are uh, connected using IoT. One of the applications which I, uh, when uh, I think I, uh, I have told you that I am mentoring startups at uh, I am Bangalore. One of the projects or uh, startups had taken up this about uh, you know, the staff nurses, you know, uh, attend to a lot of patients, sometimes 20, 25 patients at a time. And uh, you have a nursing station at which they are there. And uh, some of the patients needs continuous drips and even the medical medications, antibiotics are given through those drips, drips. But one physical problem which all of them have is the moment that drip goes completely out, then there is a reverse blood coming out. I think everybody knows this problem, you know, and they're uh, scared of that, you know. So uh, they keep making the rounds and then uh, if they are distracted with some phone call, something urgent and all that, then some things like this can happen. And especially when the patient him, uh, uh, it himself or herself is uh, not awake and there is no caregiver nearby. So uh, he had, uh, the, this uh, person has developed a drip warm, warning system using IoT, which can again actuate and tell the nurse that, yes, bed number so-and-so, this nurse so-and-so is 
uh, you have to attend immediately, you know, that kind of thing. There are hundreds of applications. I'm just giving you an example like that, you know. And all these today can be integrated on mobile devices, which makes it easier for both the nurses and the doctors who attend, duty doctors and also specialist doctors who are attending to the patient to know on re in real time what is happening to that particular patient. Now, there are other technological advancements like the fabric and plastic electronics methods, single use plastic and electronic methods. See, earlier when you think of uh, electrodes and uh, uh, sensors and other things, obviously you think, we feel uh, that it will be very costly and then all that, you know. If you have to make it uh, affordable and from safety point of view, of, of course, now we, during the COVID times, we have used more of disposable things. Plastic and fabric electronic uh, methods have been developed for very low cost and use and throw IOMT sensors, Internet of Medical Things sensors. These sensors, along with the required RFID, uh, I hope I don't know whether you know what the radio frequency ID electronics, which is used in uh, even in your uh, uh, mall showrooms. You know there are many things which uh, they have a uh, RFID tag and uh, a lock. If you did, they, they forget to remove the lock and then you walk try to walk out of the uh, shop, it gives a beep. I think I'm sure you all, all of you uh, have come across that. That is an RFID, uh, a short uh, a short range, but uh, good enough to give you any the alarms, you know. So uh, RFID tags are there, RFID uh, devices are there. This can be fabricated on even paper or uh, what we call as the e-textiles. Um, you can say metal woven, you know, all that kind of thing for wireless powered disposable sensing devices. These are all this is no longer a fantasy, you know, it's not 1984 by George Orwell, but it is these are all things are uh, uh, of reality, what is there and what is going to happen and will continue to happen. IoT in Transportation and V2X communication. Anyway, V2X actually means vehicle to everything, anything and everything, right? IoT in transportation and V2X communication. I am in a city. I think you all know that I'm in Mysore. Do you know that my, uh, we were the first city in India where we have uh, you go to a bus stand, ordinary bus stand. I'm talking about a bus stand which uh, takes you from one place to another. Uh, city bus. Not a very, I'm not talking about high-end buses. In fact, I take the bus, you know, from outside my house. If I had to go to a railway station, it costs eight rupees. That's what my, my maid uses every day to go from my house to there. You know. Now, this bus stand in Mysore has a board electronic board. Now, what is so uh, special about this electronic board? It tells you in serial order from top to bottom, continuously changing, what is the route number, what is the destination and the route it takes, at what time it is expected in the bus stand, now, within two minutes, three minutes, and the timing will exact time at which it will arrive in the bus stand in the local language and English. Mind you, let us say, ask you know, what is so great about it? It is possible because all the buses are fitted with GPS. There is a software which will tell you intelligent transport system. It is there in every single bus stop throughout the city. Imagine when you do, uh, go to your bus stand and you want to go someplace, you don't have to ask anybody. You know that that is the number of the bus which will take you there. 
it is coming in another 7 minutes from now and before that three more buses will come don't take that obviously you don't have to look at it right and then you reach the destination and how much does it charge from one place to another it is not even 10 rupees so technology can achieve so much for a simple common man now this is only a very at the lower end of the system so similarly like let us have another application where you know a lot of people are uh, talk about is on uh, let's say ambulance in a place like bangalore which is chock a block with traffic which probably you can not even imagine in the places where you are an ambulance invariably many times gets stuck in peak of traffic imagine if the ambulance is provided with a system iot in which the moment it, it is going through it blocks all other signals traffic and allows a green corridor for you must have heard of the green corridor being provided for carrying you know uh some of the you know transplant uh, kidneys hearts and things like that that is done physic uh, physically but we can do it even using iot so it's uh, uh, there are many such applications where in transportation we can achieve railways use it to a very great extent many of the uh, large uh, fleets of uh, cargo they use it and that is exactly why your amazon says that you not know, your this particular material is somewhere here now and it will reach the warehouse uh, by today evening at 8:30 now they are able to pinpoint precisely pinpoint and tell you that this is all because of this uh, iot thing integration of communications control and information processing across transportation systems is what is iot in transportation and vehicle to anything communication so intra and inter vehicular communication smart traffic control smart parking now you must have heard of fast tag of course i'm sure most many of you are using fast tag you know, uh, now statutorily all your vehicles have to be connected to fast tag if you are going through toll toll highways which was not there 4 uh, 5 uh, years back now that has become compulsory right because now the offshoot of this electronic uh, tax system is that the uh, toll collections have increased uh, at least by 30% uh, not because of uh, thing but because there was a many much many, much leakage of revenue happening earlier and plus you have to wait for you know long queue i have seen myself on especially on uh, bangalore chennai highway there are some nightmare uh, places where it uh, takes about 15 20 minutes for waiting for you to go through the toll toll and there are about at least 5 6 tolls on the on the way now all that is now a thing of the past you know there's a you, you have a fast tag it automatically detects reduces uh, you know collects the toll and then you keep moving right so this is again an iot uh, thing you know smart traffic control smart parking electronic toll collection systems logistics as the, what i told you about fleet management vehicle control safety and road assistance these are all where iot is being used vehicle to everything communication b to x consists of three main components vehicle to vehicle communication vehicle to infrastructure communication and vehicle to pedestrian communications now pedestrian communications is again like basically switching on and switching off because we have only fixed signals here here in many other places the signals are operated based on the traffic which is there okay v2x is the first step to now you must have also heard about driverless uh, cars i'm sure most of you must have heard I, it, it, it's not of course <laughs> i can't imagine such a thing happening in in india but at least uh, in many places they already driverless cars are uh, there 
So this is possible due to autonomous driving and is connected to the road infrastructure. The entire system has to be connected uh, for communications control and information. So that is what is the IoT in transportation. Now, <clears throat> we'll come to our subject where IoT in industry or industrial internet of things, as we can call IIoT, refers to interconnected sensors, instruments, and other devices networked together with computers, industrial applications, including manufacturing and energy management for data collection, exchange, analysis, and potentially facilitating improvements in productivity and efficiency. Ultimately, when, even when we were talking about quality in our uh, one of our uh, classes, we said quality relates to consistency, quality relates to increase in productivity, quality relates to reducing wastage, improving efficiency. So if you are able to automate most of these things, obviously you will achieve the first outcome would be quality and productivity. Right. So uh, industrial internet of things is enabled by technologies. Of course, there are various technologies which are there, which are used for enabling industrial internet of things. Cyber physical systems, cyber security, cloud computing, edge computing, mobile technologies, machine to machine, 3D printing, advanced robotics, big data, internet of things, RFID technology, and cognitive computing. And today we have, we talk about AL, AI and ML artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, I'm not going to get into too much of details of everything, it is a vast subject by itself. But suffice it to say that these are in four layers in, in when you apply internet of things to an industry. Although it is from top to bottom, I it's actually from bottom to top. So I'll take from bottom. It is a device layer. Just as we thought that if you want a smart home, then all my switches, all my gadgets must be smart. My TV has to be smart. My uh, All my electrical switches have to be smart. My, uh, you know, over at home or in, all gadgets have to be smart in the sense that you should be able to operate it from wherever you are and program it from wherever you are. So similarly, for, for that, each of the machines which is working in the industry, the hardware has to have the cyber physical systems and sensors on all their machines. So that is the first basic requirement, which is a device layer. More and more machines today are complying to this. Next, next is the network layer. Obviously, to operate the internet of things, your entire organization, an entire industry or organization must have a very good network using Wi-Fi, some using Bluetooth, some cellular networks, and LoRa. LoRa means long range, using very low power. Usually, LoRa technology is used in agriculture. The reason behind it is that the farmer's house and, uh, let us say, the field, of course, usually they say very near their fields. 
but still the distances are quite high you know even if a person is having a 5 acre farm let us say you know uh, thing and his house is uh, say a kilometer away and in most of these places you you can't expect a 4g and other things coming so a, a protocol like this lora or long range low power technology is there similarly in, even in an industry there may be your uh, warehouse shed may be somewhere else and uh, uh, you know all maybe we even within the same compound but then physically connected uh, or scattered around you know so you must have a network layer which is very clear which is able to con continue using communication protocol wifi bluetooth lora cellular or whatever range you know things which are there and of course the lan is a very common thing which we use that is a physical connection between one system to another system using a lan cable that i have not mentioned it here but then lan is also one of the network system then you have a service layer which obviously you need applications to be developed software to analyze data and transform it into actionable information most of you must have heard of course uh, you are very close to the uh, place where the bhopal gas tragedy happened in india uh, the nuclear uh, chernobyl accident which took place now in most of these kind of catastrophic things which happen there has been a human error i'm sure i have watched this chernobyl thing for a many uh, time nobody has come up with a movie on the bhopal of course what exactly happened in bhopal gas, uh, gas tragedy unlike what we uh, what has in the kashmir files what we are seeing but when we see that there has been a human error which happens now once you have a proper service layer to take care of every eventuality with a device layer and a network layer properly in place with a lot of redundancy because in most case cases we have what is called as a redundancy like in a nuclear plant that if something doesn't operate some a parallel line will take over immediately it is like uh, i have seen that in uh, baba prc in bombay uh, the reactors have a backup for every system and a system backup itself that means there are four ways in which if one fails the other takes over and the system fails another system takes over this is how the entire you know all these things are designed as so the chances of something happening is almost uh, uh, very 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 remote and it's not expected to be so uh, much much greater than even six sigma it must be some seven sigma like uh, uh, so there is a service layer which is uh, attended to by application software analyzing data all that you know and last is the display or the content layer after doing all this then you must be able to see it on a let us say a, a dashboard which is near the operating place there could be it should be it could be available in uh, on desktops and laptops remotely in other places where key operating personnel are there and today also possible by your mobile applications from wherever you are so that is the content layer so the user interface devices for example computer screens point of service stations tablets which or mobile tablets which people carry especially the operating people who carry with them to see what it is there if something needs to be seen using smart glasses now in smart glasses you are especially used in uh, ar vr augmented reality virtual reality type glasses where you can see see what is the what is there on the screen and uh, you also have smart surfaces if you have seen uh, i don't know uh, this was one of the indian guys who had uh, come up with uh, where you could project on any wall what is there you know 
kind of thing. So it is a smart uh, projection on any smart surfaces. All these are possible, and that is a content layer. So to make a complete industrial internet of things, you need a device layer, which is that uh, so that, that the all the machines and apparatuses are all smart, having a cyber physical system and sensors required sensors for all the machines, a network to be able to communicate and control, a service layer which has an app applications and software, and a display or content layer which provides the information in whatever format that you want to see. We also call this the UI, meaning I'm sure most of you must have heard this term UI. That is nothing but the user interface of our devices. From where you see. Okay. I will, of course, I probably could have uh, seen this. You must have uh, heard of, uh, um, you know, the versions of or the stages in which everything has happened, you know. So even in the industry, we are in now what is called as the industry 4.0. Obviously, we have not come here to industry 4.0 from nothing. Initially, when in the, the first industrial revolution, when it happened, it was all steam powered, if you know, you know, steam engine, James Watt, uh, steam engine was the first phase of the industrial revolution, where mostly it was used for textiles textile industry, the coal mining, and many other places were the first stage of mechanization using steam power and dome. As early, meaning late as in 17, of course, the date is provided so that you know that that is the start of that industry 1.0, 1784. Then in about 100 years from then, Especially when electrical energy, like uh, Edison's light bulb and the many other innovations which happened, made it imperative for people to want mass produced goods. And this could be done only by assembly line technologies and uh, using electrical energy instead of steam power, by which time the electrical energy was widely being used. So the year of start of industry 2.0 was 1870. Then we have uh, 1969, where Computers and electronics, yes, computers actually started becoming. In fact, a, in fact, IBM, um, the earlier version of IBM, which is that uh, cash register uh, company. It used to be called uh, some cash register company. Cash registers were the first thing, then came the computers. And uh, IBM was one of the forerunners in uh, computers, you know. Uh, in 1969 and all that, we have only heard of IBM 1401, which was the, it was more mechanical than in, in, even electronics, you know. It used to have card readers kind of thing. So, but automation in manufacturing and using of computers and electronics had started around that time. Although with very um, early versions of automations. From 3.0, of course, uh, gradually we have been talking about more and more automation using more and more sophisticated devices. But when it came, it has come to the industry 4.0 today, where we use cyber physical systems on the machines and use Internet of Things using networks which are now going up to 4G which you'll probably see 5G shortly in the near future. China has already come up with 5G. We are also working towards 5G. Uh, most of the world will 
come to 5G, which will make things much, much more easier. So these are the four, four zeros. Whether there will be an industry 5.0, we do not know. What else we'll do? Whether uh, the robots will fully take over the industry, we don't know. Okay, it's too early to say. But at least in this, we still can see a lot of manpower, but it is fully networked and using IoT. Now coming to the, what exactly is industry 4.0? This, if you see, first requirement is that there is an industrial internet of things, which in turn needs a network to be central. It has to be operated by apps, which are industrial operators. The IoT is enabled by sensors. And one, two, three, four ensures that you have, you can monitor using certain tools and applications, enable automation in production, provide safety to the employees, in the organization and resulting in quality and productivity. This cycle or this complete scheme of things is in using IoT is what we today call as in the industry 4.0. Uh, more and more factories, especially in the automobile sector, are moving towards this. And I told you about that uh, mm, huge hospital uh, in Delhi where I had done a six-day audit along with a group of uh, mm, my colleagues, six colleagues for CI, uh, Gangaram Hospital, yeah. I've seen their OT, Fantastic, the way they handled OT. There are 25 OTs and uh, the entire control system they operate, working 24 by 7, 365 days. Imagine all this is not possible unless you have a total automation of many things. And more and more things are getting automated. You know, if you go to any, uh, any good hospital today, whether it is Apollo Hortis and, or Narayana Hirdalia or your uh, Medanta, especially in uh, uh, Delhi region. They are all, uh, I'm sure that the, the automation is going at a very fast rate to basically ultimately to ensure quality and safety. See, the, the point is not anything. These two are the two main things. Safety and quality are the most important thing. And of course, giving productivity, uh, ensuring that uh, very low uh, Failure levels, you know, all that, you know, six, seven sigma levels. So that is, in short, what I wanted to uh, take. Now, there are other areas in which uh, what is this new share? No, nothing. No, I don't want to share. Are you? Where is the full screen? Yes, sir. Uh, how much of it did you understand? Because it is like, I mean, it's a subject which is totally. I don't know that it's new. Now we can unmute and let's have a short discussion on this. Uh, yes, who is there? Sashi Prasad or Subir Gandhi? Of course, uh, I also wanted to talk about uh, uh, the same. Uh, uh, Internet of Things, which are 
uh, other applications there are uh, uh, agricultural applications in fact a lot of work is going on in agricultural applications uh, especially in india and uh, we have uh, uh, building and home automation because in construction industry again there is a lot more then manufacturing which we have we have seen then uh, in maritime uh, boats yachts environmental applications there are plenty infrastructure applications there are plenty of applications for iot waste management and uh, energy management environmental monitoring military applications in fact there is a uh thing called internet of battlefield things you know kind of thing like today i do not know whether you know uh, the israeli spice bombs i uh, meaning we are not if you have seen which is that uh, balakot thing which happened they could precisely target and uh, uh drill through the place where the enemy was hiding that's possible only when you have such levels of control on uh, that you know in fact it, i feel sorry that today what is happening in ukraine uh, where the residential buildings hospitals schools are being targeted i do not know that's a real sad thing for in in, in any war because with the kind of technology we we have today we can target exactly what we want and still if these are happening then that shows the kind of uh, um, inhuman warfare that is happening you know right so this in short was what i thought i will share on the internet of things do you have any spe specific questions you can unmute and then ask me subir sashi prasad meghna anshaj well Ah, Sashi Prasad. Yes. No, sir. I am. Yeah. I am listening, sir. No, no. I have uh, sort of finished my presentation. I want to uh, have uh, by by next class. I yes. want each of you to look at. some project for improvement in your own place okay sir and how will you go about set uh, set uh, write the scope of the project the project doesn't mean something very big i'm saying that no yes, some improvement some this thing using some technology you need not be very uh, well versed with it is only a uh, desk exercise okay Yes, sir. Now we have taken through so many subjects in operations. Now, I am sure yes, you are. You know, when you start uh, think using or thinking about this in your own work environment, you would have, you would be able to identify one or two improvement or innovation projects for your workplace. Yes, sir. And be able to. describe that how will you go about doing that in fact you know i can we can use this for your evaluation also in fact today only i was talking to neeraj ji uh, and uh, he was telling that we have to have some evaluation you know one of these could be used for the evaluation from from my side identify a project 
you can whatsapp the, your project to me and i will guide you how uh, whether it is right or how to go about it through whatsapp only at any time you do not wait for the next uh, sunday okay okay and you tell me what is the project you have identified and we will go through it and then uh, then we will uh, you tell me how will you what all the steps you will do to implement that project in your organization okay okay sir so that is an exercise which we can even eval i mean we can use for evaluation what i'm trying to say no that's a practical use there are many things which you can do okay in your own workplace okay sir yeah so you can do that uh, you can say, you have my number for um, sending whatsapp you need not send in the group you can send it individually to me okay sir i have I, your our whatsapp number yeah yeah you you send it on whatsapp each one of you and uh i'll go through it and then immediately get back to you if uh, i need to change or see basically whenever you talk about a project i'll just give you a hint there is what is called a scope of a project a project by definition has a start an end and a scope scope in the sense that uh, what are you trying to achieve how much you are trying to achieve in terms of uh, the what parameters you will try to achieve what, at what cost you will achieve in what time frame you will achieve right so this is what is uh, a project a mini project whatever you know right so to identify some improvement project in your own workplace and uh, tell me what the project is it must contain all these uh, things and then you say that what all you will do for implementing that project okay okay sir right okay so yeah i will sign off today i think uh, that's enough you can start uh, working on those in your projects